Hello, my name's Howard Lake from UK Fundraising. Uh, welcome to another one of my occasional conversations with people doing remarkable things in terms of fundraising and giving, um, whilst, particularly whilst under lockdown. Uh, we've talked to lots of different people. Today's uh, guest is Mark Hawthorne, who is Chief Exec of Landmark Group, which is a property uh, development finance company. And what he has done um, is quite remarkable. I was first attracted to, or first spotted, uh, Christmas Party Heroes just about two weeks ago. It's a very, very new uh, fundraising opportunity, but the significance of it, it, of it is that it is available to all charities and to all companies. And when Mark joins us, I'll, be, I'll let him explain exactly how it works. But to me, it's one of those unusual um, and very sort of concise opportunities that any charity can take on board very quickly and with minimum effort. And it's, it's a ready-made fundraising opportunity for lots of people, lots of charities to use. So what we'll be finding out from Mark is um, why he set it up, what it is. Um, so yes, welcome Rebecca, thank you very much for joining. Um, I'm going to be talking to Mark and finding out what Christmas Party Heroes is all about. Um, but what I like about it is that it's also offered a whole range of social media tools that are available for charities and their company supporters, both existing but also possibly new ones as well. And the fact that there are other um, ideas in the pipeline, I've already seen them developing their original idea. So i um, happy to answer any questions um, while Mark joins us. We'll be covering this fabulous new opportunity. And it's quite a short-lived one, because I think one of the um, important elements of this idea is that it definitely works now. It's part of 2020, um, and the fact that there are going to be very, very few Christmas parties, except via Zoom, which kind of um, changes the, the atmosphere at most Christmas parties. Um, and it's going to be, it'll work this year. What I'm curious, um, and will ask Mark, is do they have any plans, given the success of it so far, whether they will um, uh, join in, uh, whether they will be able to have anything else. Um, yeah, see so what they can build on. So yes, Mark's, Mark's here, he's just dialing in. So I'll be able to, to welcome him and find out more about Christmas party here. So there he is, there's Mark. Hello, Hello Mark, how are you? Very good, thank you, yourself? Very good, um, actually I, I can't hear you, so I'm gonna try pulling my machine out, there we go. Mark, thank you very much indeed for joining us um, on UK Fundraising. Um, I just wanted to um, congratulate you on what you've achieved with Christmas Party Heroes so far. I think it's a fantastic idea and one that is very, very new. Um, I think you only launched it with about three weeks ago, perhaps? Uh, I had the idea on the 1st of November. Uh, yes. And then we shaped it up very, very, very quickly, probably second, third, fourth. And then by the 7th, we were in the Sunday Times business section. <laughs> Fabulous. What, what sparked the idea? Um, so it was 1st of November, which is usually a weekday. Um, we usually start our Christmas planning um, around then of what are we going to do with clients? What are we going to do with staff? What are we going to do with charity? And I thought, well, the first two we can't do anything with. And the third one we should do more, which, which leads to the immediate conclusion of let's just lump it all into one and give it to charity, which then leads to the you know uh, very quick consideration of maybe everybody should do this. Now, I, I appreciate that that's a, a sweeping statement and not every business is in a position to do it, but I, I believe that if a business is in a position to be having a Christmas party or were, were in a position to be having one, then they can quite easily give that money to charity, which is surely more deserving. Absolutely. So tell us, what, what is Christmas Party Heroes? How does it work? What's, what's the aim? So it's not a charity. Um, that's, that's far too complicated with the, the amount of time we had available. It is literally just an idea that has sort of formed into a movement for corporates to simply reallocate their budget to charities. And on the flip side, for charities to speak to corporates to get them to reallocate the budgets to them. So there's, there's effectively a pincer movement of us as a corporate speaking to corporates and charities speaking to their corporate partners and others beyond. Um, yeah. And whilst, we, whilst we've had a lot of success to date, we really are only just getting started. And we're now on a daily basis um, having tens of thousands of pounds flooding in from people we don't know. So to start this off, it was obviously lots of people we do know. 
um, and now it's beyond that, which is great to see. And it's people we don't know who are, who are, don who are donating to it. So it's well outside of our usual sphere of influence as a business uh, into the wider world. And again, you know, we're not even in December yet. So I do believe there's actually a hell of a long way we can take this year. That's also exciting. I think the fact that it's, it's applicable to pretty much any charity who can benefit as long as they're, they've got it, they can find a corporate supporter. So that's quite a good, good challenge for charities that don't have company supporters to go out and find one, perhaps a local one um, that's relevant to them, but also available to any, any company on, this, on the assumption that pretty much every company celebrates Christmas in some way with a party or some kind of perhaps even gifts to, to employees. Yes, uh, we're, quite, we're quite open around, I know we're not fussing, I'm sure the charities are around where the money comes from. And, and admittedly, you know, if somebody wants to give a lot more money than they would spend at a Christmas party, yeah, we won't ask any questions. <laughs> Very good. So I think in your first, was it after, was it two weeks? The first two weeks you had an astonishing total of pledges around a million? We were in, ex yeah, we were in excess of 500,000 in the first week. Um, yeah. We're now well over a million. What we have got as well is a lot of very, very big partners who have confirmed, but because they are so big, it's going to take them um, a little bit longer to actually figure out how much money is available within their groups. I mean, some, some of these are multi, multi-billion pound turnover businesses. So um, th there's a lot to be added in that is confirmed. We just don't have the specifics yet. Plus there are a lot of other very large corporates um, who are processing it through their internal systems, which isn't always the quickest. So, yeah, so watch this space, basically. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Excellent. So how can charities take part? How can they, can they benefit? Um, so, so by the website, um, we've developed, uh, which is something Simon, who, who, to be fair to Simon, is, is running it on a daily basis. Simon came up with a marketing pack for the charities, um, which allows them to drop all their own branding in and push the idea out. So it really is sort of now almost an idea in a box where we can set up the marketing pack. They can put their own branding into it. They can go out to their supporters through their social media channels, through their friends and family, any which route they want. Um, to attract interest and hopefully to divert some donations to them. And we're getting some great success stories back from that so far. That's so good. And I can see that you're also expanding it already. So I've seen it's gone international, but you've also got other ideas as well. I spotted the Secret Santa idea. Do you want to say more of what you're doing? <laughs> yes. So the, the international one was, um, you know, I, I wouldn't take credit for that. It's sort of the, the guys in Canada, um, a, a company called, uh, sorry, an organisation called Canada Helps, mm. Um, they've raised 1.5 billion Canadian dollars for charities to date. Um, they saw it and thought it was a great idea, so they've adopted it. Uh, we've got a few other countries looking to adopt it. It's just taking a little bit longer because of language barriers. Um, so we hope to announce more soon. Um, and then from there, um, a, a bit like you've alluded to earlier, Howard, um, Secret Santa, which some people, maybe me included, roll their eyes at it a little bit. Uh, there is the ability for people to, in, in with the Secret Santa gifts or as an alternative to, um, you know, buy a homeless person a meal, a bed for the night, depending on the context, and, and give that to a colleague, which I think is a far nicer gift than some novelty soap. Um, we're also, um, and this is an exclusion for you, we're also looking to launch um, a treasure hunt. Um, there's, a, there's over a billion pounds, uh, which is a conservative estimate, spent on Christmas parties each year. So what we want to do is, as well as going in through the corporates and through the charities, the biggest number of people out there who can help us is actually the employees. Yeah. And we want to turn employees' attention to their own employers and their own um, potentially unspent budgets and launch this um, you know, fun, a bit tongue-in-cheek treasure hunt to find all this unspent money and to get it to the charities. Uh, and, I, and I think we can really capture the public's imagination with that one. Yeah. That sounds fabulous. Thank you. Yes, and that's what I like. You just keep sort of slicing and dicing it and presenting it other fundraising opportunities. A true, yeah, true the, 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 quite a lot of the ideas are being fed into us of what about this, what about that. But obviously the more, and, and today included, the more exposure we get, the more interaction we get, the, the more benefit we can deliver. Yeah, that is brilliant. And assuming the success continues, um, do you have plans to sort of reenact it or ex expand it next year for... I mean, I know history will be very different, but... Uh, hopefully be very different. So it, it, is to, it, is, it is to an extent circumstance-driven. Yeah. Um, what we... I suppose it won't be us necessarily, but the charities will then have um, a number of new corporate supporters that have been driven to them. So we'd like to think they can evolve um, organic relationships into 2021 and beyond through that. Um, 
can we do something next year? I think we'd have to see. I mean, we are always keen to do whatever we can for charity, which is usually a little bit blunter than this year, just writing checks. Yeah. Uh, whereas this year, obviously, alongside that, we're, we're putting our weight behind this and really, really trying to leverage it to get the maximum benefit. I genuinely believe we can get millions upon millions of pounds more than we've already got. Yeah, I'm sure we can. That sounds fabulous. So can you just remind us of the web address for Christmas The web address is um, Christmas Party Heroes, Christmas with an X. um, And the Twitter handle is the same. um, And we also have a page on LinkedIn, which should be relatively easy to find. Um, Any of those you can interact with us. um, Or the website, the email is hello at Christmas Party Heroes, again, Christmas with an X, dot co dot UK. Very good. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Mark Hawthorne, and congratulations on what you've achieved so far and what you're going on to achieve. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Speak soon. See you later.